so thank you, Molly, for um, hopping on a call um, and, and doing this. So I'll get you to quickly just introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about who you are and, and what it is that you do. Sure. So my name is Molly Patton and I help scientists to track more opportunities to transform their research into real world solutions. And I do this by taking the complicated scientific information that's related to what they do. And I turn that into visual content that looks great and is easy to understand. Awesome. Um, very clear and precise. I love it. Um, so take me through where you were uh, in your design business before you came into profitable designer. Um, yeah, I, I was doing okay, uh, but I knew I was stuck in, in a rut and I just wasn't quite sure what that rut was. Uh, but I very quickly identified that through Profitable Designer that it was actually this same rut that many designers get caught up in and that is offering just design services. And as someone who offers design services in an area that previously hasn't had that much interaction with designers, I kind of, I knew that I needed to think differently about how I presented myself and how I marketed myself to my target audience of like academics and scientists. Um, but I just wasn't quite sure how to package that up. And that, that's why I came to Profitable Designer. Awesome. Um, so how have you enjoyed your experience in Profitable Designer so far? Where do you feel like you've got the most out of it? from like structure, content, way of thinking? Uh, probably all of the above. Um, I, I really, the biggest thing of all is probably just being able to talk to someone who gets it. Like being a designer too, Patrick, like I feel like you really understand the, the key challenge that designers face in marketing something that's not always tangible or quantifiable in a really easy term. Like it's not like being a personal trainer or an accountant um, there's there's always something that's a little bit abstract about design services because it's so broad and it can be so different. And I'm really, as a, as a problem solver, I'm really enjoying that process of trying to figure out how my business can break through that barrier of just nailing how to communicate that to my target audience. And as well as seeing how other people do it too in, in their own businesses. And I'm enjoying you know, the, the, almost the community aspect of it, it too. It makes you feel like, it. oh, it's not just me that has this problem. Um, so it's, you know, it's nice to see other journeys that are completely different to mine in many respects, but also, you know, solve my own problems as well. And just getting that uh, exposure to how broad design can be. I'm actually learning a lot more about my industry as well. Awesome. Um, so you've kind of crossed on this, I think, with a couple of your answers, but take me through what you think the biggest aha moment was that you've had since being inside the program. Um, oh, that's easy. Uh, that's um, definitely, <laughs> definitely the biggest aha moment is the realisation that it's okay not to have the entire roadmap planned out. You can just be a few pages ahead of the client and, and that's, that's okay. That's perfectly acceptable. And that's allowed me a lot more freedom to just play and experiment with the different kind of pitching and marketing strategies just to, just to see how clients react and how they respond to different kinds of language and different kinds of services, you know, packaging them up differently and just being okay with they don't have to be perfectly polished and have a full product launch in order to do that. It can just literally be an A4 piece of paper saying, what do you think of this? And that's freed up so much more time, so many more resources, and it's really allowing me to make a lot more headway much faster. So definitely, yeah, removing the perfectionism, shall we say, to put it in a sentence, has been the biggest aha moment. Wow, that's, that's, I love the way that you kind of put that. So like, in a way, do you feel like, because what, what we find a lot of the time is where most people can improve is, that they have one business model that they set in stone and then it doesn't move. But are you fundamentally saying that you're just throwing out prototype business models to people and seeing what the response is and then allowing that to change the course and the trajectory of the business? Yeah, totally. It's almost just, yeah, like I, I throw things out there and I get feedback and 
as that happens, the studio kind of just organically evolves rather than me trying to force it into a specific structure. It's just kind of, you know, it's almost like a living organism. It just kind of does its thing based on its environmental feedback. And all I do is, you know, throw the chum in the water and see what happens. <laughs> nice chum. <laughs> That's a word I haven't heard for probably. <laughs> <laughs> like in Australia, we've got a dog food company called Chum. That's the last time I heard it, probably 20 years ago. Um, so so take us through like some of the results that you've seen in implementing uh, the thinking and the strategies. Yeah, totally. So there's there's been changes on a, a lot of fronts. Um, there's been sort of, you know, some positive financial changes, positive structural changes. But I think if I can pin it down to one thing, like the biggest shift has been actually my, my relationship with my clients and their perception of what design can do for them beyond just pretty pictures or, or great visuals. And I've really noticed, particularly over the last 12 months, and whether that's been because COVID has meant no one can go anywhere, so they have more time to think about it or a combination of that and I'm just putting the right things out there and they just happen to be looking at it more because of, you know, circumstances. I, I don't know, but I've really noticed a significant change in the last 12 months in the kinds of projects and opportunities that have crossed my desk and specifically since shifting my own language from offering you know, services based design, I suppose we could call it to offering a process that yields a solution to a deeper problem. I've really noticed that scientists are beginning to think about design in a different way. So rather than asking for that specific service that they think they need, they're beginning to trust the process to actually determine what aspects of design they need rather than, as I said, you know, saying we need this, we need that. They're, they're coming to us with open-ended questions and really, you know, putting their trust in us to, to find something that will suit just them. And with that comes, you know, broader scopes of projects, which comes bigger budgets and more creatives involved. So the whole enterprise through just flipping that switch from services to a, a process, the whole enterprise just grows stronger with each project. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what it can, what I can do with that and what kind of impact the studio can have with this newfound momentum. Really nicely answered. Um, that and that's I think the big thing that we find with all of the design businesses that go through the program is that it is that flick of the switch from moving from being told what to do to becoming a trusted advisor that actually has intellectual property themselves, where people see seek you out for your own advice and your own strategy. I suppose so. Yeah. Totally. Um, and that's yeah, like. Um, it's definitely the most important shift. And I think your business model is the, the way that you've gone about reaching out to people and fundamentally seeing what sticks and what people respond to is just going to set you up for like continually progressing and, and building better offers and, and charging and getting better opportunities and projects. Um, awesome. And I think you were about to, I think you were about to like edge into the last question. Um, because you've seen the questions obviously before coming on, but um, how has this changed the way that you look at your design business moving forwards? Um, yeah, I, I actually, when I saw this one, I, it, it really, I don't know, I, I struggled with it a little bit because I was like, you know, where to go from here. But I think there's like the possibilities really are endless. As I said, you know, I'm treating this not so much as a, a rigid business structure now, but actually is quite an organic process that just kind of grows and evolves as it needs to so I, i'm really you know i'm just the the person that that feeds it so <laughs> i don't want to say chum again um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I, I literally am just you know the the almost the caretaker of this so i'm really excited to see where it goes and all i really have to do is you know steer occasionally so it doesn't hit any icebergs and um yeah just keep everything on track, but there, there are certainly some, some systemic things that I, I know I need to work on. I need to work on my marketing and my outreach. You know, I have relied very heavily on uh, organic um, sort of things coming in. Like there's a lot of 
recommendations that most most people are either return customers or they've been recommended by a previous client which is amazing but it's sort of like right how to extrapolate that now and turn that into um you know cold outreach which turns into warm leads which turns into you know amazing new collaborations and, and projects so there's definitely that that has kind of remained untouched so i'm really excited to see what happens when i do tap into that mm -hmm. um but it's also you know finding out what works and then sort of trying to solidify that a little bit more and putting fail safes in place to ensure that you know that particular process can keep generating positive results and, and it's replicable so other people can come on board and, and help me out because it's yeah it's getting really busy so it's all exciting and um yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes but there's still a lot of growing room for this whole process to evolve perfect awesome well yeah thank you so much for your time molly and um good luck and enjoy your your holiday and uh your activities other than Whereas, well, I've got no activities going on in the UK at the moment, but um, yeah, thank you so much. And um, we'll speak again really soon. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Thanks for having me.